Hello, welcome to the Trial Line Podcast. I'm your host, Bo. This is my co-host, Danny. Hey, mate. How you going? Good, mate. Um, it was wet and wild at the grand final on the weekend. We were there. Everyone was in, look, looks like hazmat suits, trying to keep warm. But um, we sat out there in the rain and copped the whole game. How good was it? Yeah, mate. It was uh, It was pretty cold. We had to go buy some uh, some jumpers, beanies, scarves. <laughs> Tell, tell, the, tell the fans how many layers you add on. Because you, you're the worst. If, if it's a little bit cold, you're freezing. If it's a little bit hot, it's the end of the world. So you t- tell the fans how many layers you add on. Okay, so I, I had a I had a jersey. Then I bought a jumper. I had a jacket on already. <laughs> Pardon me. And then I had a poncho on. And I also bought a scarf and a beanie. <laughs> I, was, I was struggling. I was oh, struggling. The uh, ANZ really cleaned up on you, mate. Oh yeah, mate. I think I spent bloody two hundred bucks just on on a team that I don't even like. I bought two hundred bucks <laughs> worth of Panthers gear. Oh, but that Pam- Pampers jumper was nice, and I think you got your uh, I think you got your missus something as well. So, oh yeah, I bought her a scarf and a jumper as well. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, well, it was a good it was a good uh, game though. It started with the uh, with the women's game. Oops. Yeah, yeah, mate. Uh, we had the women's uh, Broncos. They defeated the Roosters twenty to ten. So, congrats to the. Um, Broncos. Yeah, I think it, third third time winners there. They've won every season. I, I think, think so. so. Is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Has that so. only been three seasons, has it? I think, yeah, three official NRLW seasons. Um, all right, yeah. We'll, the Broncos, all three. Broncos shot out early. Probably a bit of grand final experience here. They shot out to uh, 12-0 after 10 minutes. But the Roosters seemed to settle into the game after that. And it was very competitive for the rest of the first half, I thought. But then second half in the wet. Ali Brigginshaw controlled the rest of the game and just um, they got home on the on the back of her. She threw a beautiful short ball um, late in the half and that was right in front of us, so it was, that was pretty good to watch. But um, they're just too good in the second half. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, if you have a look at the um, at the stats, the attacking stats, um, they pretty much all favour the Roosters. I mean, you look at the, I think it was the run metres, post-contact, they had more sets, mm. they completed more sets. Um, they had three force dropouts to no force dropouts. Um, so yeah, looking at the stat, at the stats alone, you'd think that the Roosters would have won, but the bloody Broncos got got it got it done. Yeah. And um, actually, here's a here's a nice stat for you, mate. Um, the Broncos they've only lost the one game ever in the three seasons. Really? They yeah, only lost the one game. I heard it on. I think it was on the loudspeaker at the game. Or one of the one of the women said it. I think at the post match ceremony. I think one of the one of the girls said it. So, well, that's, more that's you know, funny. You uh, rattled off the stats for that game because you look at the main game. Like Penrith had more ball. They had more possession. They had more sets. They had more run meters. Um, they had more post contact meters. They had more tackle breaks. They had more kick meter. Uh, kick return meters. So similar tail of the tape there, but um. Yeah, the Broncos, they, they were just you could see in the second half, um, they're just too classy. They just um, controlled the game, took their opportunities, and um, yeah, they're, they're a great team, and they'll be hard to beat again next year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, anyway, we'll get into the uh, men's grand final. The Storm beat the Panthers 26-20. to um, Yeah, the Storm really dominated the first half. It was 22-0 at halftime. Yeah. Um, what do you think of the of the Panthers' first half? Um, I thought... I thought... And it was, it's strange to say this because they're down 20 new, 22 nil at halftime, but I thought they were playing good. I thought they were the better of the team. Just their end of sets were, were pretty poor, obviously, and um, and I thought that they're probably their kicking options were poor. But Melbourne scored 26 straight points, and then the Panthers scored 20 straight points. So that was like the tail of the grand final there. Um, Penrith started, obviously, with a lot of intensity. They, I think they forced an error off, straight off the kickoff. And then... Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. The end of that set, uh, straight straight after kickoff, they they got a set attack in Melbourne's line, and that pretty much summed up their whole first half. They they worked, they worked to the middle for a kick out, and then nothing. Then they had no other option. And then I think he, um, I think Cleary put up a cross field kick, and it landed five meters short. And then that that was pretty much was going to dictate what they did for the rest of the half. I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, I think Cleary's like. Yeah, his his kicking options weren't the best. Um, like he'd bomb it, and he said it was five meters short. Then the next one was ten meters short, and then like a few sets later, he tries to throw that cutout ball, and 
he gets intercepted. Yeah. And it um, seemed like he hesitated on that too, where they yeah, haven't hesitated yeah. all year. They've been really sure about what they wanted to do. But even that was like a double pump. Do I give it to the, um, what's his, oh, I always forget his name, Luai? Do I give it to Luai? Luai. Yeah. Or do I do I throw the cutout ball? And I think, yeah, like, like you said, that, that, that was just a, the story of their half. Um, I want to just get into some of the refereeing decisions too. Um, I'll just rattle off some and you give me your thoughts. Uh, the penalty try, the first try to Olam, fair? Not fair? I mean, it's fair because yeah. it's in the rules. You can't use your leg to, like, you can't kick the ball out of someone's hands when they're going to score a try. I thought but that was I fair. think, yeah, it's fair, but I think they should maybe change the rules. I think, put it, like, he didn't really kick it out. He kind of, like, stuck his leg out. No, so, so there are there are two points to this. So if you say you put your leg out and you're not striking at the ball and he plants the ball on your foot, that is actually that's just a no try. That's not a penalty. That's a no yeah, one. Yeah. But if you strike at the ball, which I actually think he did strike at the ball, then, I think he did as well. Then it's a then it's a penalty. So the reason they got rid of that is so people stop kicking people in the head. Like yeah, yeah. So that that's fair enough. But yeah, I I can agree with that. I, um, I mean. Yeah. I think it should be like this is just my opinion here. Like with the shoulder charge, I think they should bring the shoulder charge back. But if it's done incorrectly and something happens, yeah, so then you can penalise that. Head. Yeah, exactly. So if you kick the ball, you can you're allowed to kick the ball, but if you make contact with the player, then it's a penalty try. Yeah, um, Cameron Smith's try, stroke at half time. You happy that Coruscant was playing at the ball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. That's a pretty easy one. Uh, the biggest one, and the one I, I kind of want to talk about a little bit, is um, the Panthers' first try, uh, Toho's try. Now, Isaiah gets the ball, drifts across field, goes behind his own player, puts a grubber in, Toho picks it up, scores in the corner. That, in no world ever in the history of NRL should ever be a try. And it's not even close. If you run behind your own player, now you can run behind your own player, it's, it's allowed, but it, you cannot take advantage after. You cannot gain an advantage after running behind your own player. He runs behind his own player and kicks the ball and they score. How is it a try? Man, I couldn't tell you. I, it should have been a no try. I don't know what the um, what, what the bunk was thinking. Maybe he was thinking because the, the line wasn't, Impacted. Um, oh, that's what he said. Impacted. He said he said that yeah. the line was impacted, but it was set up a no try. That's that's one thing. It was set up a no try. That mm. makes it worse. So the um, Sutton on the field actually got the call right. And the second thing is, how can how can like a thousand people watch that same replay? We all get to watch it. It goes up to the video. We all saw it on the big big screen, and almost every single person that knows anything about the great game took one look and said, "Oh well, it's a shepherd." Yeah, I mean we'll. You heard the fans like the as like when when it was coming up when it came up on the big screen, and um, he ran behind his own player and he put the ball down. There was no cheering. No, but and then it comes up. It comes up a try on the, on the big screen, and then even the Panthers fans knew it wasn't. A even try. the Panthers fans, when they saw it, when he when they saw him run behind his own team, they kind of all went, "Oh, like you know what yeah. I mean." But it was the easiest call of the night. It wasn't. Mm. I didn't even think it was close. So. And then the worst thing to come out of all this is a reporter, Brent Reed here, writes for the Courier Mail. He actually contacted the NRL and tried to get clarification on this. And the NRL said they were comfortable with the call. So saying that the video ref got it right. Well, then I don't know and no one knows the rule anymore. If that, if that mm -hmm. is allowed to be a try, then I don't know what a shepherd is in the NRL. Yeah, mate, I don't know. Yeah, I just thought that was know. ridiculous. Anyway, on, on the refereeing, um, I think there was a lot of 50-50 calls. Probably the majority of them went to Melbourne. I don't think that affected the result. I think uh, Melbourne were the better team on the night. But um, any Panthers fans out there complain about the refereeing, he's had nine more sets with the ball. He's completed 69%, and he's had 18 errors. So I, I think he's got more to worry about than what uh, the referee was doing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, I think they try to play around the storm a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think that's maybe that's the way that they've been, they've been playing all year. And Ivan Cleary even said, like, they're going to stick to what's been working. Um, so maybe they just try to throw the ball around a little bit. Um, I think, I and Kiki was having an off night as well. Well, I think we spoke about that early. 
I think they decided to go um, behind Kikia too late. I think mm. for most of the first half, it seemed like that was their only play was to hit two to the post or three to the post and then try and get kick out at Hughes. When, like, even I said it um, last week, I think the play should have been Crichton at um, uh, Brinko Lee. And you've seen that he got one-on-one with him in the second half and burned him and went straight over him, you know what I mean? So I don't think, yeah. they, I don't think they gave Crichton enough early ball and I think they... And a lot this year, they they use kick out as a decoy a lot this year, and it worked for them. Yeah, and I don't think yeah. they nearly done it enough. Um, I also think Naden was huge when he got on. I thought he lifted him. I thought he, he he definitely changed the energy. Um, the fans the fans erupted as soon as his name got called, and he got on there. And I think he had um a line break, a line break assist, and um almost set up a try there. So I think Naden was pretty big when he got on. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know why they. They're not starting him. He played in 16, seven, 16, seven, seven 16 be, seven. 17 games in, the, in like throughout the season, and they won all seventeen of them. That's and that's, then, that's enough games to know whether he can defend or not too. Yeah, and he, he, he I don't think he's he's a slouch in defence. No. Surely not. And they needed another option there. They they needed another option desperate, and he's he's just a spark there. Um, talk about a spark, the fullback for Melbourne. The third string fullback, the guy that Scott Drinkwater was going to start over, Billy Slater started off it, over him. Pappenhausen was kind of an afterthought. He's just won the Clive Churchill in the grand final, and to be honest, it wasn't really it wasn't really close. He was outstanding, and that that try off the scrum, that'd be played on highlight reels for the next decade. Like that was he turned. Um, I think it was Cleary. Cleary was on the inside, and he just burned him. And they, I think they had a big. Um, Nelson, Nelson Assault, so for Solomona, running a line there, and he, he spoke about it. He said, um, I knew that he would attract some defenders, so all I had needed to do, he if he runs a good line, I'm going bur- to break him here, and he just burned him, and it was close the gate after 10 metres. He was outstanding. Yeah, yeah, surely. I'm, I'm a little bit filthy on him for scoring that try. Yeah. I, I, I had a bit of a bet with him that uh, if he scored and won the grand final, I'd have to send him some of my basketball cards, so... <laughs> Oh yeah, well, feel that. Well, that's probably was in the back of his mind as well. But um, Clive Churchill, good on him. He's a, he's a great bloke, and the way he reacted after the game, he didn't think he was gonna he was gonna get it. And there was actually a good moment. We shared it on Twitter. Um, he found out in the post match press conference, like off to the side, that he was getting picked in the New South Wales team. And um, Cameron Smith kind of found out at the same time, and they had a nice little moment there. So congratulations to him. Talking about the Origin sides, what do you got? Yeah, for you, yeah, mate? yeah. Well, now that the uh, NRL season is over, we've only got eight days until the origin begins. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, me and Bo thought we'd uh, we'd chuck in our one to seventeen there, and maybe uh, throw in a eighteenth man. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll let you start first. All right. Well, um, the Queensland one's a bit a bit of a strange one. We got a, we got a ton of injuries, but um, here's my one to eighteen. I've got starting at fullback. I've got AJ Brimson. Um, he had, a, he had a great end of the year, so I think he'll he'll get the nod there. On the wings, I've gone Edric Lee and Dane Gagai. Uh, in the centres, Kurt Mann and Brinko Lee, now a grand final winner, Brinko Lee. Uh, Munster and Terry Evans in the halves. I'll go Papali and Christian Welsh uh, in the front row. Christian Welsh had a great game um, on the weekend. He, he was outstanding. Um, Harry Grant at nine. That's my kind of surprise packet there. I, don't, I think he gets the nod over Ben Hunt. Um, I've got Felice Kafusi and Jaden Sua in the back row with uh, Jai Arrow. And then on the bench, I've got Ben Hunt as a utility, uh, Tino Fasua Malawi uh, in the 15, <laughs> <laughs> Mo Fodawaka in the 16, and Kurt Catewell gets my last spot on the bench. Pat Carrigan um, and Fodawaka is the ones that I think could switch around. He might get a spot on the bench. You reckon? I, I, it's 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 a hard team to pick, but that's the best I could come up with. Mm, mm, yeah, I'd I'd pro- I me personally, I'd swap in Pat Carrigan for Kate Will. Okay, yeah, Kate, Kate think... Will Kate Will gives you another option and can play um out wide if if you need it, like in the centres. That's why oh, yeah, I thought, yeah, thought yeah, it was a good cover true. there. But K- Pat Carrigan was very very good this year, so I wouldn't be surprised oh. if he gets a jersey. Yeah, he was one of Broncos' best, especially when um, Payne Haas was suspended in the uh, the back end of the season. Speaking of Payne Haas, I, I think you'll get a spot in your side. 
Oh, yeah. Don't worry about my side. You're in love with him. You're in love with yeah. us. <laughs> don't, don't worry about the New South Wales side, mate. Um, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll get on to the, uh, the winning side. New South Wales we'll side. See. We'll see. You know it. You know it. Um, anyway, at fullback, we've got James Tedesco. The wingers, Daniel Tupo and Josh Adokar. I think Tupo will get will get this pick over anyone else. I think he's a target for he's a, he's a good option there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good option for the for attacking kicks. Um the centers, Jack Whiten, obviously. He had a really good um series last year. And I've got Clint Gutherson as the other center. King Gutho. Wow. Um yeah. Now I've picked Cody Walker at number six instead of Luke Keary. So that's a talking that's another point. one. That's a talking yeah, point. Yeah. I want to come to that at the end of the at the end of your list, mate. All right. All right, all right, all right. At our seven, uh, Nathan Cleary. Uh, the front rowers are Payne Haas and I think Jake Trevojevic. You can't you can't not have Trevojevic in your side. Yeah. Uh, hooker is Damian Cook. Back rowers are Tyson Frizzell and Boyd Cordner with the lock, Cam Murray. Yeah. And the bench, I've got Cam McGuinness at 14, Junior Paulo and Daniel Saifidi and Dale Finucan to round it off with Luke Keary being the 18th man. I really like Cam McInnes. I, l- I love that you picked him. I think he, I think he's in a jersey. Um, I love that you picked the third best five eight in in your team at five eight. Like Whiten, Whiten's a better five eight, and Luke Keery's a better five eight. I understand Whiten in the centres because he's a he's a big body and you need him in a team. I thought Cleary probably gets the nod for New South Wales here, but um, Cody Walker did have a great season. But the the one knock on him is he he hasn't really performed in those huge games yet. No, no, he hasn't. I mean, last origin, I think he got the hook last origin. Yeah, and I think he played better in game three off the bench. I think he, I think he added something off the bench, or when, when, whatever game he played, he come off the bench. He played better than when he did when he started. So, I and I think go on. I, I don't know. I don't. If, and the New South Wales team's so strong, like you can probably pick two of different team, two or three different teams, and they've probably got a better team on paper than Queensland anyway. But I just think you give. You give uh, Kiri a go there, especially game one. Uh, I think, I think the feel that game give Cody Walker, give Cody Walker a go. He'll feel him out, and if he goes well, he goes well. But if he if he doesn't, give the give the spot to Kiri. I think. Well, it's going to be such an interesting ther- series because um, injuries are going to be such a huge part. They can't they can't bring anyone in. So your twenty to seven man squad, that's all you can pick from. You get down yep. to seventeen players. And no one, no other reserves. That's that's the seventeen they have to play. So that that's going to make it interesting. I think it's a it's not a good Origin series to bet on because you don't know what's going to happen in the first game. Like Damian Cook goes down in the first game. He's in some real strife. Like he's a bit of a stalwart there. So like anything can happen. I can't wait. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be here every Tuesday uh, from now on for the rest of the Origin series. So we'll be here on the the eve of State of Origin. And then uh, going forward, we're probably going to look to uh, go to one show a week until next year's um, next year's season starts. So we'll we'll let you know what day that will be. But um, that's probably the plan there. And during the off season, we'll probably cover a bit of uh, a bit of cricket, uh, and we'll we'll cover all the uh, obviously all the NRL stories that we've got. But um, don't forget to follow us follow us on our socials at TrollineYT on Twitter, TikTok. Uh, YouTube and Instagram. Um, we're posting every day there, multiple times a day. So go check that out and um, see you next Tuesday.